So I made a little video talking about wheels versus power meter and uh, just had a few discussions there. And uh, just a few discussions. Justin said many riders out there would rinse fault with a power meter. It means nothing. Even though they know how to use it, you can't buy a power meter then expect to be a good cyclist versus someone who's conditioned over 15, 25 years. It's not going to happen. Well, right, this opens up a can of peaches. Let's get into it. So I agree with Justin. Definitely, you can't. Just walk into a shop, buy a power meter, and then go for a ride, and you all of a sudden you're a gun. It doesn't work that way. But what you can do, just squeeze over here a little bit. Squeeze over a little bit. <sighs> squeeze over here a bit. A bit, bit closer. That's it. What you're going to do with a power meter is it's going to let you know how to pace yourself. It's going to take a few hundred kilometers of riding with a power meter to go, oh, okay, if I do 200 watts, this is how my heart and lungs feel, my legs feel. Can I do 200 watts for like a, you know? Basically, what it is, it's a, it's a pacing tool. You'll quickly learn... It's a bit like it's a bit like money, right? It's about money in your hand, and you're gonna go traveling to a new country. You're like, well, how much does a hotel cost? How much is the food gonna? How much is a thousand bucks gonna last me in Bangladesh or U.S. or whatever? It's gonna be different, isn't it? That's right. So when you ride with a power meter, yeah, you have a little Garmin on your on your on your bars. It'll give you a little screen, and it'll just show you your numbers up there. I'll turn this on, get it going. It'll just show you what you can do. So you know how much money to spend, how much you can go. I know I can hold maybe 400 watts for only five minutes, and then I'm, I'm popped. So someone might be able to hold 400 watts on EPO for an hour, or you know, for 420 or whatever. So it, or someone might be holding 150 watts at their limit, because of how much you weigh, etc. What drugs you're on, your experience, fitness level, a lot of factors. But the numbers for you will be different from other people. But what it does, what power does, is it teaches you how to pace, how to pace, and that's the that's the power of a power meter, pun intended, is it gives you something to pace with. So it's like when you go on a, a holiday, here we go, all, all I really focus on is power cadence in the main ones, have sunrise on there, heart rate, and again, so heart rate versus power, that's another video, but heart rate is so variable. My heart rate for a marathon, about 170 my heart rate for the best time up Norton Summit is like 174 or whatever. And I was like fucking all out. But 174 I can hold for an hour. But there's no way I could hold that wattage for an hour at Norton Summit. So heart rate is just variable. If you have some caffeine, your heart goes... Pfft. If you're dehydrated, it can go down. If you're tired, there's so many things that affect heart rate. People go, oh, just get a heart rate monitor, it's cheaper. It's like, you just don't know, do you? And the two people in society, two types, there's the people who pay attention... And there's people who just go, oh, yeah, like, she'll be right, mate. And I used to be like, oh, yeah, she'll be right, mate, sort of person. And then I started paying attention. I started watching YouTube videos. or I'd go out training with Lance. or train with Condor. train with a lot of these big hitters, these, these, these guys and their fucking good drugs with the best team physicians, the best team doctors, etc. You know, rubber bank team doctors or whatever. And just talking with people and understanding, oh, okay, cadence, cadence, cadence. And that two and under every year, more and more riders come with power meters. You know, first year, 2000. Six or started seeing power meters, and only a couple of the rich riders had them. Like power meters, you know, you got a special there. And now everyone's riding power meters. Everyone, they're fucking cheap as relative for people who live in a Western economy. Obviously, if you live in Bangladesh, a thousand dollar power meter, it's two years' wage. So if you're living in the US, Australia, Europe, etc., obviously a power meter is a lot more affordable for us lucky people. So the power meter is definitely a tool you need to have if you want to get the gains. If you want to get the gains, if you want to progress faster, the people I, I coach, train, ride with, advise, they progress faster. Than, I don't know any cycling coach on the planet that can take an absolute fucking new rider and demonstrate what to do, gears, cadence, things like that. And the most powerful tool I have in my arsenal is having people have a power meter. Because then, like, when I go running freely, I can't just say go hard or go easy. What the fuck does that mean? That's, that's very relative to the person, you know? Going hard for me is, might be easy for someone else or impossible for someone else. So it depends. But if I can say to freely, sit on 150, sit on 150 watts, she just looks at the computer, okay, and just, and just backs it off or brings it up. Sit on 250 or whatever. So if you can give numbers to people, boom. So when people go, Harley, I want to go to Thailand, how much should I bring? Well, it depends. You know, it depends on what you want to do. So if you want to ride for an hour up a climb, your wattage is going to be a lot less than if you're going to do a five-minute Strava effort, all right? For maybe for an hour, for me, I'm going to hold 290 watts. Five minutes, four or five minutes, 400 watts. So you, I hit the climb based on what I want to do. And that's why I can climb so well compared to most other people because they hit the climb and just blow themselves up. Or, the, or we'll be holding 350 watts and they'll attack at 550 and just, just blow up. 
And they, oh, I'm not disciplined enough, not fit enough. No, you just fucking blew your legs. You got lactate in there. So you're definitely a power meter. Bottom line, pacing tool. It's a fucking pacing tool. Every single rider in the world will benefit from a power meter, even if you've got a little hybrid bike or whatever. It's going to help you. I mean, I wouldn't put a power meter on my shopping bike, even though I do ride this to the shops, because it might get stolen or whatever, you know. But if you only have one bike and use it for everything, definitely get a power meter and maybe get a better lock as well. But a power meter is going to help you. Total noob riders, the biggest market I see is with total noob riders. But in cycling, this is so much superstition. I've been, cycling's the thing I know most in my life. That's the sport that I know the most things, the training, etc. I know the little things. I can spot world-class talent in a couple of minutes if I've got a power meter on. And I haven't been wrong. I haven't been wrong at all. But spotted some fucking world-class talent just by looking at numbers, man. I remember going uh, riding with uh, Rowan Dennis and Jack Brobridge. 2009, I was going to Norton Summit, and they came past, and I jumped in the back. And I'm sitting on, like, 450. And I'm thinking, these guys are fucking going for it, you know? Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So power is the most objective data you can focus on. Average speed means fucking nothing. Heart rate, too many variables, just like average speed. So power is absolute. So someone says you can't buy a power meter and just become a good cyclist overnight. That's true, but you, bottom line, you will fucking progress faster if you've got numbers to follow. You don't need a training plan or whatever, but if you if you know what watts you can hold for an hour, you want to do a 100k ride, keep it under one to three watts per kilo. You want to go top of the king on Strava, seven watts per kilo. You'll get every fucking Strava segment at seven watts per kilo, anything that's over two minutes. You'll get every fucking segment. So you'll quickly learn what it takes to get what your goal is. There you go. Power meter is an essential tool for any cyclist, no matter what your fitness level. People say, oh, but Richie Poor, he, he doesn't... Use your power meter and, and fuck off, man. Those guys, look at what, what's the thing? They're looking down the screen. Chris Froome's like this. He's like a nodding noddy. You know, he's just like power. Like, <laughs> something makes me dizzy how much he looks at his wattages. So people, I mean, you get quotes out of context or whatever. You know, or someone does a bit of trash talk and like, yeah, I just got my feel or whatever. It's like, man. <laughs> It's bullshit, mate. Power. Everyone's focusing power. As soon as a pro rider finishes a race or whatever, like Tim Kerrison or whatever, they're onto the fucking what's what'd you do today? Boom, 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 your weight, blah, blah, blah. Just analyzing everything, analyzing the data. Cadell Evans, power meter from the get-go. That's why he was so good. One of the reasons. Because he had power early on. Learned the learnt what power felt like. Ten thousand dollars for an SRM back in the day. Now you get stages as good an SRM for like eight hundred bucks, thousand bucks. Power meter is definitely gonna be the best tool you can get. Lightweight wheels, I mean, they're fun, they're fancy, but they might save me seconds on a 15-minute climb. A power meter can literally save you minutes, all right? Minutes. <coughs> That's a lot of bullshit, dude, all right? Eddie Merckx didn't have a power meter, mate. If you want to, what you got to do, you say, oh, I train, mate, so I don't ride anymore, this is how I used to train. You slap it in the big ring, mate. Launch it in the big dog. You lock it in the big dog. You chuck it in the gutter. You string those cunts out. And you just fucking go for it, mate. You fucking go for it. You gotta build strength. If you wanna climb fast, you gotta focus on strength, mate. Big dog, everywhere you go. Every hill, every downhill, every fucking gutter. In the fucking big dog.